Hey there, welcome back to the channel. My name's Chris, and today I want to talk about code performance. Specifically, I want to talk about the performance of code that you might find in a library as it relates to IoT or embedded software projects. This past week, I was working on a touchscreen driver, and the last thing that I had to do was save your calibration and restore your calibration. And when I did that on a device, the Meadow F7, which is an STM32 based system, the performance was, eh, let's just say it was abhorrently terrible. I decided to do a few things. First, I wanted to profile it, see exactly how bad it is, why is it so bad, and then figure out some sort of recommendations on what to do about this. So let's go take a look at some code and we'll kind of follow the progression in the reverse order of what I tested, but in the logical order that you'll see. So here are some calibration points. Two very, very simple pieces of data that has four integers in it. When you calibrate the touch screen, I need to take that, turn it into something, I went with JSON, and save it to disk. The next time the device boots up, I need to take that text and turn it back into these objects. Very simple, something that most programmers do quite regularly. It turns out that the performance on the F7 was terrible. I decided I would go run some tests with different libraries and see exactly what was going on. I effectively ran four tests for serialization and deserialization. Everything from manual, so in the manual you'll see that when I serialize, I just use a string builder and append to it. This is very brittle. This is very dependent on the exact object that I'm serializing and deserializing. It is not the ideal here. I did at least get property values by name, but I'm looking specifically for these named properties. This would be the fastest, but it is also the least extensible code option. The next option is I used system text JSON. And this was actually my original attempt on the device that was really, really bad. Since I was using system text JSON, I figured I'd at least test the other popular Newtonsoft library as well. I also tried another one called Simple JSON. I'll put a link to it down in the description to this. It will be important later on when we look at uh, some of the results. But let's just take a look at if I run this right here on the desktop. I have tests for both serialization and deserialization. They're very similar in their results. So let's just take a look at half of it. Let's look at the serialization tests. I'm gonna run that right here on the desktop. And here are the results. You can see they range from almost no time at all for the manual, all the way up to a 10th of a second for the Newton soft. A tenth of a second doesn't seem like a whole lot, but the order of magnitude between manual and the Newton soft is staggeringly high. Even the simple JSON takes about a millisecond and system, te system text took 68 milliseconds. So almost 70 times worse. Also take a look at the memory allocation a substantial difference between the two. But let's move this down to some other devices. First, I'm going to try this on a Raspberry Pi Zero. So I compiled the exact same code and moved it over to my Raspberry Pi. You can see that the difference here is substantial. We went from one to 80, but here we're going from three to you know, almost 800. It's a significant difference. Again, this might not be a problem for an application, though we are starting to see an impact, right? This is almost a full second that it would take, and that is human noticeable time. Now let's go take a look at this on the F7 where I initially noticed the problem. Again, these are the exact same tests, in fact, we're using the same file for all of these tests. So I'm going to deploy this to my device. 
I'm going to let this run in real time rather than speeding it up, just so you can get a feel for how bad this is. It's still running right now. You can see the simple JSON took about 194 milliseconds. System text JSON to serialize just those two items took 10 seconds. And Newtonsoft, still not done yet, took 18 and a half seconds to serialize nothing other than these two calibration points. These deserialization, I'll get similar numbers. In fact, I have them recorded here. Deserialization takes about 16 seconds with Newtonsoft, 11 seconds with system text JSON, and about two seconds with a simple JSON. We see that the time difference here is horrible, and that's the most noticeable thing. But also take a look at the amount of memory these use. Simple JSON, 700 bytes, 2K, versus 40K or 60K for a popular library. Another thing to take a look at, let's go look at what these look like on disk. Let's go into the post link. So this is a binary that has been trimmed to remove everything that isn't used. Newtonsoft is 370K. So that's disk space that is being used to hold this, which in an embedded device is a precious resource. You don't want to just waste space because you don't always have a lot of space. System text. 389. These also probably have references to other libraries that they have pulled in that you may not have needed. So we're greatly increasing our footprint on disk as well. But let's take a look at the simple JSON. It's 16K and it's not bringing in anything else. So what is the lesson I want you to take away from this? Just because a library exists and can run on your embedded device or your IoT device does not mean it is an appropriate choice for what it is that you're doing. You must test. Oftentimes, you'll see libraries that are built that have great functionality, but these libraries are designed for all sorts of scenarios. They cover every possible scenario that you would run into rather than being focused on just a few things. The cost of that flexibility is often paid for in size of the binary as well as performance because it has so many checks and things that it has to do. So just because the library exists and it can compile does not mean that it is the best solution for your application. Be prepared to have to find alternates two popular libraries that you may use or are used to in order to make them work effectively and acceptably on an embedded device. That's all I've got for today. Thanks for watching.